Welcome to Lecture 1 for ECE 320 Electronics 1, Circuits 1 Review. Now, in this lecture, we'll be covering some topics that you cover in Circuits 1. Specifically, we'll be looking at resistor networks, adding resistors in series and parallel, and circuit analysis techniques, including current loops, voltage nodes, and Thevenin equivalent. All these techniques are used in Electronics 1 and 2. There are shortcuts we'll be using in the course, but you can pretty much analyze any circuit just using these techniques. So starting out, if you have a resistor circuit, circuit resistors in series add, so 100 in series with 200 in series with 300 is 600 ohms. In parallel, the inverse is add, so the resistance of 100 in parallel with 200 and 300 is 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 300 inverse. This is where an HP calculator is really, really useful. I highly recommend an HP ca calculator. I find it's worth about 10 points on tests. The reason being is it can scream through calculations really fast, and tests tend to be a race. You've got a limited time to get to the, get to the end, and HPs help you do that. Plus, they give you the right answer, which is a big plus. The oddity of the HP calculator is there is no equals button. Instead, they've got this thing called a stack and enter. When I do plus, minus, multiply, divide, I'm operating on the stack. So multiply multiplies x times y. Divide is y over x and add. So to add these together, I've got to use the stack. So let's take 300, push it on the stack, and 200. The stack now contains 300 and 200. I can add those. When I type in 100, it automatically pushes 500 on the stack and then let, lets me input a new number. The total is 600 ohms. In parallel, I take the inverse of 100, add to it the inverse of 200, add to it the inverse of 300. Now take the inverse, it's 54.54 ohms. A little bit of practice for you. Let's pause the video and have you try to find the resistance of this circuit. And again, this is where the HP is really, really shine. Okay, so picking up, if, assuming you just pause the video, to solve this one, I have to figure out what's in series, what's in parallel. 100 isn't in series or parallel with anything. Series means that all the current through the first resistor goes through the second and this current splits. Parallel means the voltage on both sides are the same, and there's nothing in series or parallel except for these two. 200 is in series with 300, so they add. Now that 500 ohms is in parallel with 400. In parallel, the inverse is add, so the inverse of 500, inverse of 400, add the inverses. All this together is now 222 ohms. In series with 100 is 322. In parallel with 500 is 195 ohms. And kind of illustrate the greatness of the HP calculator. If this is a test, let's do marks, get set, go. 200, enter, 300, add. In parallel with 400, in series with 100, oops, in series with 100, in parallel with 500, 195 ohms, done. There's a couple other buttons you might have seen. There's X and Y. I can flip the order of X and Y, and recall down, rotates the stack. or current loops. One of the techniques to analyze the circuit is to use the trick of coming up with n equations and unknowns. In Math 129, you took linear algebra where you learned how to solve n equations and unknowns. That's the trick that we use over and over again. If I can convert a problem to n equations and unknowns, I can solve. With current loops, the idea is conservation of voltage. If I sum the voltages around any closed path, 
and wind up back where I started, I've got to get to zero. So using that technique, I can solve for unknown currents. So for example, suppose I have this circuit. Find the current in the circuit. The first step is count how many windows I have, and I've got three of them. So I need to write three equations, three unknowns. Step two is to find the currents. I like making all the currents go clockwise, so I'll have I1, I2, I3. The third step is to write n equations and unknowns. So if I start right here and go around this path, I've got to get to zero. For consistency, if I hit the minus sign first, I'll subtract. If I hit the plus sign first, I'll add. So, going around that loop, what I get is this voltage, which is minus 10, plus this voltage, which is 100 times I1, plus this voltage, which is 400 times the current going down. The current going down is I1 minus I2. I'm back to zero. So there's my first equation. Second loop, 400 times the current going up, 400 I2 minus I1, plus 200 I2, plus 500 I2 minus I3, equals zero. Second equation. Third equation, 500 I3, plus 300, correction, 500 I3 minus I2, plus 300 I3, plus 600 I3, back where I started, equals zero. Three equations, three unknowns. Uh, check on your equations. The units have to match. I've got volts, plus I times R is volts, plus volts. These are all voltages, these are all voltages, those are all voltages, that works. If I had something like um, just an I3, I know I've got a mistake because I have volts plus amps. That doesn't make any sense. I've got to have the same units for each element that I'm adding. A second way to check your answers. Notice that around loop I1, all the I1s are positive, everyone else is negative. Around loop I2, all the I2s are positive, everyone else is negative. Around loop I3, all the I3s are positive, everyone else is negative. That's a quick way to check for sign errors. You're going to get that as long as you have each loop going the same direction. But anyway, back at the ranch. Once you get three equations, three unknowns, on a quiz or a test, you're probably done. On the homework, I can solve. So what I would do is group the terms, put a matrix form. What this means is that 500 times I1 minus 400 times I2 plus 0 times I3 is 10. That's my first equation. Second equation is the second row. Minus 400 I1 plus 1100 I2 minus 500 I3 equals 0. And the third equation. And MATLAB I can solve. So if I write it this way and then multiply it on the left by A inverse, I'll have X equals A inverse times B. In MATLAB, I would do it as follows. I input matrix A, square bracket is the start of the matrix, comma is next row, semicolon is next, correction, comma is next column, semicolon is next row. So here's the first row, second row, third row. My B matrix, current is inverse of A times B. Now to check my answer, I can throw it in CircuitLab. Now CircuitLab is a really friendly program. Uh, let's do file, new, it's a drag and drop type program. If you register with CircuitLab and use your NDSU email address, you can get it for free. Again, our department pays for a set license for the entire university for a year. To use CircuitLab, really just drag and drop. If I hit R, I can rotate that element. I'm not going to draw the entire circuit, just kind of part of it to show you how you, how you use it. Once you get your elements in there, I can sit there and connect them up. Okay, let's add two more just for what.
this is kind of optional, but I can put labels up here. That makes it a little bit easier to analyze the circuit or just match your answers. And let's call this one V0. Call this label V0. V1. V2. Now to find the answers, if we go under simulate, I can do add expression. This is under DC. Uh, this is quite fit on the screen. There. Under DC, add expression. I'm going to look at V0, V1, V2. Let's go back under build. Double click, I can change the values. Um, and then simulate. I want to look at V0, V1, V2, run, and there's my voltages. Now, one thing you got to watch out for is if I type in 10 volts, that's going to confuse Circuit Lab. This is 10, not 10 volts, volts. If I simulate that one, it's going to give me 0. Again, it doesn't know what 10V is. The voltage is 10. It already knows this voltage is it's a volt. Now that, that'll work. So if you get an answer in Circuit Lab that's way off, you probably typed in a 10V or 10A. Again, current sources are also amps. Yeah, you don't have to type in the V or the A. So in Circuit Lab, if you run that circuit, I'll get the same answers that, that I had before. Again, I had 30.6 milliamps. The current is 30.6 milliamps. To get currents, what you do is I'll click on the left side of the resistor. They'll give the current going left to right. I'll click on this part of the resistor, current going top down. Current through R2 is here. If I click on this guy right here, that current is going to be I1 minus I2. This current up here is just I1. So either one's fine. This one's a little bit easier to compare because it's just pure I1. This point right here gives you pure I2. But those should match up. Like I2 is 13.3 milliamps. I2 is 13.3 milliamps. That's current loops. A super loop is sometimes I can't write the loop equation. For example, if I have a current source, I can't write the current or the voltage across this guy right here. What the current source does is it provides whatever voltage it takes to maintain the current. So that doesn't help. If I try to write the loop equation around I2, I don't know what this voltage is, and I can't sum the voltages to zero because I don't know what one of them are, one of them is. So I need to do something else. That's where super loop comes into play. So if I have this circuit, what I do is, again, I've got three windows. I need to write three equations for three unknowns. Define your currents. That's your I1, I2, I3. Now write your loop equations. This guy right here is actually the easy one. This says the current up is 2 amps. The current up is I3 minus I2. So there's my first equation. That one's kind of a gimme. I need two more. Going around loop I1. Minus 10 plus 100 I1 minus, well, just 100 I1, plus 400 I1 minus I2 equals zero. That's my second equation. I need one more equation. I can't write the, note, or the loop equation around I2. I can't write the loop equation around I3 because I don't know this voltage. Pick another loop. And to see what it is, uh, this guy right here hasn't appeared in my equations yet. So these have to appear in my loop equation somewhere. Uh, what I could do is use this big super outer loop. That's a closed path that has resistors and voltage sources on all the elements. I can sum those voltages to zero. So that's one valid super loop. I could also do I could also do this loop. That's also perfectly valid. 
taking the first loop that'd be minus 10 plus 100 i1 plus 200 i2 plus 300 i3 plus 600 i3 back where I started equals 0. There's my third equation. So I've now got three equations, three unknowns. I can solve. Just like before, you group the terms, put it in matrix form, throw it in MATLAB, solve, there's my currents. So that's the super loop. A uh, handout. Try to write the loop equations for this circuit. And let's just pause the video, let you try to write those, then we'll pick up. Okay, picking up. I've got four windows. I need four equations, four unknowns. Start with the easy one. That current is 200 milliamps. That current is I1 minus I4 is 200 milliamps. I need three more equations. Loop I1 I can't write because I don't know the voltage across this current source. I4 I can't write. But I can write the loop equation around I2. Around I2 would be 250 times the current going up, which is I2 minus I1. Okay, remember, the shortcut is around loop I2. All the I2s are positive. Everyone else is negative. Plus this voltage, that's 200 times I2 minus I4. plus this current, I2 minus I3, and I'm back where I started, that's got to be zero. Around loop I3, uh, this voltage, which is 350, I3 minus I2, Plus this voltage, I hit the plus sign first, so it's just plus 10. Plus this voltage, plus 450, I3. That's going to be zero. I need one more equation. And notice the 150 and the 100 haven't appeared anywhere in my equations. So I could use a big super loop, like this guy right here. That includes the two unknown currents that I have, or two unknown resistors, or the two resistors that need to appear in my equation somewhere, and as a closed path. That's my valid fourth equation. So the fourth one could be 150 I1 plus 100 I4 plus 450 I3. Gives me four equations for unknowns. That last equation, there's actually a couple options. As long as it's a closed path, it includes the 100 ohm, 150 ohm, and does not go through the current source, because I don't know that voltage. That's a valid super loop. Uh, another valid one would be from here to here. That would be valid. Or I could do that path. That's valid. If you really want to be different, I could do this path right here. Oops, get good through the current source. That would be valid. Uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's a closed path, it includes the two resistors that I'm missing and does not go through the current source, it's a valid fourth equation. That's current loops. Voltage nodes is based upon the concept of conservation of current. Current is the flow of electrons. Electrons have mass, not a lot, but there is some math, mass. If I'm not creating matter, then the total number of electrons created has to be zero. So conservation of voltage, correction, conservation of current, says that current in equals current out, or equivalently, the total current from the node has to add to zero. 
So the trick with voltage nodes is to first define your ground reference. Let's call that one ground. Step two, define the nodes. So here's one voltage node. Here's the second voltage node, third node, fourth node. If I had a wire connecting these two, I only have three nodes because these are all connected. Um, I don't, so I actually have four nodes. Now I need to write four equations for unknowns. For the voltage source, I have V1 minus 0 equals 10. That's one equation. At node 2, current left, current down, current right has to add to 0. That's your V2 minus V1 over 100 plus V2 over 400 plus V2 minus V3 over 200 equals 0. That's this equation. At node 3, current left, current down, current right adds to 0. Current left is V3 minus V2 over 200, plus V3 over 500, plus V3 minus V4 over 300 equals 0. At node 4, V4 minus V3 over 300, plus V4 over 600 equals 0. Four equations for unknowns. Now, like before, what I do is I group the terms, put it in matrix form, throw it in MATLAB, and here this gets kind of long. So what I did is here's the first two rows, and then add to it, take the first two rows and add the third and fourth row, gives you the A matrix. B matrix, inverse of A times B are your voltages. Now, a couple shortcuts that help you check for sign errors. When I write the node equations, note that at node 2, all the V2s are positive, everyone else is negative. I'm summing the current from the node, so if I raise up the voltage on node 2, the current starts flowing out. That's the plus V2. On the other hand, if I raise the voltage on V1, current starts flowing in, that's the minus. So the current from the node is negative, is flowing to the node. Likewise, at node 3, all the V3s are positive, everyone else is negative. At node 4, all the V4s are positive, everyone else is negative. That's a quick way to check for sign errors. Plus the units have to match. Volts equals volts. Volts over ohms is amps. Amps plus amps plus amps. That makes sense. If I had something like this, I know there's an error. I've got amps plus volts. Uh, those don't add. I need to make sure everything's the same unit. So I'm adding amps. I've got amps plus amps plus amps. That's consistent. Okay, and circuit lab. I can also check. Build the circuit, click on this point. Correction. Uh, click on the voltages to find your V1, V2, V3, V4, and the voltages should match up. Okay, calculated 10, 6.9359, 10, 6.936, you know, rounding. That should match up. Super node. Sometimes when I write the equations, I'm stuck. I'm adding the current from a node. So right now at node 3, I can find this current, I can find this current, but that current, I don't know what it is. So I can't write the node equation to V3. I can't write the node equation to V4, because again, I don't know this current. In that case, what I do is I use a super node. What a super node is a closed path. The total current from that closed path has to be zero. So for the super node, this is the total current coming from that super node. That, that has to add to zero. If I'm not creating matter inside that closed box, the sum of the current has to be zero. So the procedure with the super node is same as before. Here I've got a circuit. This is ground. Four unknown voltages give me four equations for unknowns. Two equations are easy. The voltage source says that V1 minus 0 equals 10. This source says that V2 minus V4, correction, V3 minus V4 equals 2. That's two equations. Add node 2. I can say that V2 minus V1 over 100 plus V2 over 400 plus V2 minus V3 over 200 equals 0. 
I need one more equation. So it's form a closed path where I can find the total current from that node. So this is one candidate. That would say the current left, V3 minus V2 over 200, plus V3 over 500, plus V4 over 600, equals zero. That's my super node. And just like before, once I get four equations for unknowns, group the terms, put it in matrix form, solve, and there's my answer. And note that V3 minus V4 equals 2, V3 minus V4 equals 2. That checks. In Circuit Lab, again, build the circuit, click on the voltages, tell it to solve. I should get the same answer that I had before. So here's another example for you. Try to write the voltage node equations for this circuit. And we'll pause the video, let you try to write those, then we'll go over it. Okay, going over it, I've got four nodes. I need to write four equations for four unknowns. Start with the easy one. The voltage source says that V3 minus V4 equals 10. That's one equation. At node 1, the current up, current right, current down equals zero. The current right, or current up, is V1 minus V4 over 100. The current right is 200 milliamps. The current down is V1 over 150. That's everyone, that's gotta be zero. And node two, these currents add to zero. Let's do that in a different color. So at node 2, that'd be the current left is minus 200 milliamps. That's this current. Current down, current right. Current down is V2 over 250. Current right is V2 minus V3 over 200 equals zero. Note three, I'm stuck. I don't know what this current is. Note four, I'm stuck. So I could do a super node and here's one candidate. Again, kind of knowing what needs to appear in the equations. The 150's appeared, 250's appeared, 200's appeared, 100's appeared. My equation has to include the 350 and 450 ohm resistors. So here's one candidate, uh, another perfectly valid candidate would be this. Uh, another perfectly valid candidate for my super node would be this. No, any of those work. Taking that last one, I would just have V1 over 150 plus V2 over 250 plus V3 over 350 plus V4 over 450. The current out of the super node has to be zero. Four equations for unknowns. Thevenins. Now, Thevenins really throw everyone, but they are actually really useful. The idea behind a Thevenin circuit is if I put a resistor right here on the right-hand side, I've got a voltage and a current. If I draw that on a load line, voltage and IL, misspelled L, I'm going to get a straight line. Any circuit with the same load line behaves the same as far as the output's concerned. The simplest circuit to give you the same load line would just be a resistance and a voltage source. That's called the Thevenin equivalent. To find the Thevenin equivalent, 
if these two circuits are the same, um, do a test on the circuit on the right, do exact same test on the circuit on the left, I've got to get the same answer. For example, if I have this circuit, what I could do is say, um, the open circuit voltage is V thevenin. Do the same thing on this circuit. Open up the circuit, calculate the voltages, and using voltage nodes, current loops, voltage division, pick your favorite technique. This is 5.33 volts, so V thevenin is 5.33. Uh, to find the resistance. What I do is I turn off the voltage source, measure the resistance looking in. Same thing over here. Turn off the voltage source. Over its current source, turn off the current source, making it zero. Find the resistance looking in, and that's just 100 in parallel with 300, in series with 200, in parallel with 400. Total is 162 ohms. This must be 162 ohms. Um, another way is if the resistance isn't obvious, apply a 1 volt test, test to this guy, calculate the currents, and the current in this case is 6.13 milliamps, which you can find using current loops, voltage nodes, you know, various techniques. The resistance then looking in is 1 volt draws 6.1 milliamps, the resistance must be 162 ohms. Same answer. Again, you got to turn off the voltage source. So all the circuit right here can be replaced with a voltage source of 5.33 volts and a resistance of 162 ohms. The reason for doing that is sometimes this circuit is easier to analyze than that one. They're equivalent. They both behave exactly the same, so use either one. The Thevenin takes a little bit of work to get to, but it sometimes really helps analyze the circuit to see how it behaves. So in summary, if I have a resistor circuit, I can simplify it. Resistors in series add. Resistors in parallel add as the sum of the inverses, inverted. To solve a circuit, I can use current loops, voltage nodes, or Thevenin equivalent. Current loops says that the total voltage around a closed path has to add a zero. Then you write an equation to add unknowns. Voltage nodes says the current from any closed surface has to sum to zero. Then you write an equation to add unknowns. And Thevenin equivalent is to replace the circuit with a simpler circuit that has the same load line. That's lecture number one for ECE320 Electronics 1.